God bless those who are here t- uh, tonight, those who are tuning in online um, around the, the country and around the world. And God, uh, use us for your glory, God. This is not about uh, Dot Rock. It's not about Emmanuel, the connection. It's, it's about you. But God, you use us in our personalities. You use us uh, in our giftings uh, to be uh, ambassadors of your word. So we thank you for that. Uh, continue to lead us. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, Reverend Franklin, Dr. Franklin, Father God, and his surgery and uh, the success of it. Um, and uh, can you lift up Brother Franklin? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Uh, everybody should have a handout. We are, I don't know how far we'll get on this, and those who are tuning in, um, you know, and I know uh, it should be online, but I don't think I did, I don't know if I said it or not. But anyway, we'll, put, we'll have it up there. When we talk about nine uh, powerful traits of successful leaders. So tonight is going to be more of how uh, on leadership, in a sense. I haven't did, did that in a while. And, uh, and of course, it's, it's scripture-based, but how we can become successful leaders. And we need to become successful leaders, not for ourselves, but for other people, okay, uh, for, for, for people to grow. And, uh, and we need to make sure that our youth and all are involved in that as, as well. I want to encourage those who are watching, make sure your youth uh, are coming, make sure they are uh, learning, you know, uh, things. You know, it's, it's amazing before I get into this how people think they, they're going to grow and they're going to be uh, have any level of success. Success is not a, a house. It's not a car. It's not anything like that. Uh, it's you fulfilling the mandate in your life. But we think we're going to do it just by living. And I'm telling you, uh, it don't happen. I don't know one person that I'm connected with that have, with, have operated any relative amount of success that don't, that's not learners. They all are learners. They all, no matter what kind of degree they have, they all are continuing ed, continue to, to do things, you know. I tell people all the time, there's a reason why corporate America pay millions and billions of dollars to companies such as um, uh, VEC uh, to, to, to teach people uh, about how to be better. They ain't doing it just for no reason. They're doing it because uh, it, it, it's helping the bottom line. And then we in the, in, in the body of Christ, we think we just going to say hallelujah, praise the Lord, okay, and not learn principles and learn the word of God and apply them. And, and, know, and all of a sudden, bam, we're going to be there. And it's not going to happen. That's why most people don't live fulfilled lives. Don't maximize the potential that's on their life because they won't learn. You know, I tell people, I, I, I try to learn something every, I ain't try. I learn something every day. There's not generally a day go by, maybe on a vacation here and there, maybe, because uh, I don't, you know, I'm trying to be balanced in that because I can be really unbalanced in that, to be honest with you. You know, I can go on vacation and, and work because uh, I don't really work because I love what I do, uh, you know, so I, I, I really don't go to work. I ain't went to work in a long, long time. Uh, and I'm, I'm serious about that. People say that, but I'm really, really serious because I love what I do. But, but every day I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to learn something about God. And I'm, I'm going to look at, I'm going to listen to something, empowerment or motivation every day. Every, every day, every day, every day. There's not a day to go by. And generally when I'm, I'm, when I'm driving and, and, and I turn my car into a, 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 a university, uh, I'm texting myself. I put it on pause and I, I said, text myself this phrase, this slogan, this message. You know, I generally get my messages that I teach y'all on uh, coming to work, gentlemen. Yeah, I, I really do, you know, li- listen to certain things, hearing God, and, th- and, that's, and that, uh, that would happen. So I just want to let you know, just pay attention to what we're saying, and, and, you, and you're going gonna to grow. Uh, you, you really are. I can't even tell you all the things that are happening right now. It'll really blow your mind. It's blowing my mind, I'm telling you, to be honest with you, uh, what God is, some things God doing. Not because of me, and this ain't about me, but because of principles. I was, uh, I was just left the chamber uh, in Jody Singer, who's... Uh, uh, retired from being uh, NASA's uh, director, first female to have been director of, of NASA and Washington Flight, State, Flight Center here. And uh, I, was, I was there, and a uh, gentleman, well, Dr. Carr, Dr. Chuck Carr there at UAH, uh, said, Doc, man, you, you're doing some great things. What are this, 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 and that? And, and the president of, of, of the Huntsville City Council said, said, he earned it. You know, he earned it. And the reason I'm saying it to you, not to gloat, because we all have to earn it. That's what he said. He said, you know, he said, he's been, he been, he been grinding. He earned it. And I want to tell you, faith without works is dead. Now, those who are listening to me, I haven't gotten to what I gave y'all out yet. I'm just kind of flowing uh, right now. But he earned it. And I'm telling you, you have to earn it. 
It's not going to be given to you. You have to, uh, to earn it. You know, I walk in this room, I said, Doc Rock, and, 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 and uh, Dr. Nichols said, I remember when he was a pebble. <laughs> he said, I remember when he was a, you know, Dr. Nichols said, he said, I remember when he was a pebble. You know, he, he said, but he outpunted the coverage because his wife way better than he is. Of course, he's partial to Audrey. But anyway, you know, but, but, but that's saying something because guess what? You may be a pebble that's, that's going to become a rock, okay, or, or whatever. But, but it don't happen overnight, right? All right, let's get into this. Nine powerful traits of successful leaders. And um, uh, Pastor Joseph, God bless you there uh, in, in, in London. And, um, and I'm, you know, and I did get your text about maybe you coming having lunch with us in Italy next week. So we'd love to see you. Um, leadership. Leadership is, the, uh, in his definition, y'all heard this uh, many, many, many times from me, the capacity to influence others through inspiration, motivated by a passion, generated by a vision, produced by a conviction, ignited by a purpose for a common cause. That's what leadership is. That's what a leader does, right? Leadership is not titles. So I need you to understand, we're not trying to raise up followers. We're trying to raise up leaders that follow. We're not raising up followers in Emmanuel. We're trying to raise up leaders that follow. Thus, we launch leaders. Because every good leader is a good follower. Right? Okay? So, we, so we're looking for leaders because we need you to lead in your area of expertise. We need you to be subject matter expert, okay, in what you do. Okay? SMEs, as we would say. We, you know, in, the, in what God have called you. Right, I was, talk, I was talking to, to, to Keith the other day, uh, and those who are listening, Keith is one of our pastors here. And I was talking to Keith Williams, and I told him, I said, you know, God have called you, okay, in an arena of, 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 of substance abuse and, and people being set free and delivered and, and all these things. Okay, I can come teach some of that, and, you know, we teach at uh, Coomer's place. He loved me to come. And, and I'm like, okay, but I try to avoid him like the plague sometimes, even though he's my friend, because my message is, is, is a little different. But, 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 and I can't do what Keith can do. No, I really can't. No, 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 no. My gifting is not in that area like his. I can say some things that people can be moving all, but, but, but there's a depth that he can go to that I simply can't go. Okay? And you got to know that. You got you to know where your gift is. You know, you, you, okay, okay? If you are a leader, you there to influence in your sphere of leadership. And you can't stay in your lane because your gift, that gift you have, makes room for you. And that's the only thing that makes room for you. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that later. All right. So, nine powerful traits. The first trait is self management. Now, I can stay on this all night. You know, y'all know uh, I teach on emotional intelligence and self uh, awareness and self management is two, the first two traits, so I can really stay there, but, I, but I'm going to try to keep moving. All right? Self management is okay. Let me read the scripture, then I'll talk about it. Um, first, I have a scripture to go with each one of these. Uh, 1 Peter 1 and 13. 1 Peter 1 and 13, New Living Translation. It says, So prepare your minds for action and exercise self control, which is self management, which is self management. Put all your hope in the glorious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. I want to focus on the first part, though. So prepare your minds for action. All right? Action. Action. God wants us doing something, right? And it exercise self-control or self-management. All right. If you look at your handouts, it says, it's hard to manage others effectively if you can't manage yourself. Most people don't know that, that they, are, they are not good managers of themselves because they're not really aware. So, they, so they, 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 they'll never get to where they need to be at because they don't manage themselves. Self-managing means, in your hand out, means, but mean, means being able to prioritize your goals and being responsible for accomplishing those goals. As an effective leader, you must be able to regulate your time, attention, and emotions while remaining aware of your strengths. You may want to highlight this one. Weaknesses and potential sources of bias. And most people know their strengths. Very few understand, understand their weaknesses or will acknowledge their weaknesses. And most definitely don't look at their potential sources of bias. And what I'm saying it is because you guys, we all have some biases in us. We all have some implicit bias in us, in unconscious bias. And if you don't learn how to manage that and see what, what the deal is, then you, you would say something is real that's not a truth that's not even true. 
based on your bias. And okay, and it don't, it don't have to be an ethical bias. It could be a, 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 a positional bias of, of how you was raised. And not, now you bias against some, somebody who may have, uh, you know, have this or have that or went here and went there, right? Because of how, how you grew up. Listen, I, I have many biases that I'm dealing with all the time, especially as I get into different circles. And I'm like, oh, man, I used to talk about that. Like, oh, I didn't understand it was that way, right? And we all have them, and I hear people talking all the time, and, you know, I'm always assessing you. I'm sorry. You just need to know that. Uh, just, it just comes natural. If I'm talking to you, I'm probably assessing you. Not, not to kill you, but just, it's just a natural thing. That's what I have to do, for, you know, uh, when, it, when it comes to our leadership, uh, professional development. Okay? And, and, and I'm like, okay, man, ooh. And I do myself like that. Why? Because you got to learn to manage you, but you can't manage you if you don't know you. Right? So, you know, you, the Bible tells us, examine ourselves. And before you, get the, the, before you get the splinter out of your brother's eye, get the beam out of your eye. But the only way you can do that is assess that there's a beam in your eye. Meaning that what Jesus is saying, you, you don't even realize there's a beam in your eye. You're not even aware that you are way past the person you're trying to correct. You're worse than them. But most people are not aware of that. But, if you're gonna be, but, but, but successful leaders manage themselves. They know how to say, you know what, I messed up. You hear me say this, I stand correct. I said in a minute, I stand correct, meaning that I said something, but you know what? Hey, I missed it. We, you know, one organization that, that uh, I'm, I'm chair of, I don't call it a name or anything like that, but we're we, we looking for some different things and we got to do the paperwork and all, right? And, uh, and one of the guys who here, he's, he's on that board with me. And, um, and, and I sent some things out as, as a chair and, uh, and, 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 and he and others corrected a few things. And I said, okay, that's good, that's good. I stand correct, right? I, 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 that's good, right? Now, if I have no awareness, it's like, well, hey, I'm, I'm the chair. I'm, I, hey, I'm, I'm running this show. I'm running this thing, paying no attention to what y'all got to say. You see what I'm saying? And that what, and, and, and that what happens sometimes, okay, when we're not, when we, we're not properly self-managing ourselves. So prepare your minds for action, it says, and exercise self-control. Or the Bible even called it temperance, which was the fruit of the Spirit. It's temperance. You, you, you got you, you to gotta control you. You can't fly off the deep end just because. Now, a lot of believers, we do, we do that, and then we mess up our testimony. You know, well, you know, oh, I'm human. You, you stop using that, 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 that excuse. We know you're human. We see you, right? But you can't use that excuse because you didn't control your temper. Just say, I messed up. Don't say I'm human because that's a cop-out. I'm human. No, just say, you know, I missed it. I stand correct. I blew it, Right? Because if you do that, that means that I'm looking to improve myself. If you always, if you say I'm human, that means I'm going to do it again and again and again and again. And this is the reason why I'm human. And see, you'll never grow that way. Successful people don't think like that. They don't talk like that. They don't act like that. Because you can't get to certain places being that way. God can't use you that way. And, God, and, and so God is trying to get us to a place that he can use us for his glory. You know, there's only so many church people at this level that you're going to be able to reach. We're trying to reach a bunch of more people. You can fool them, okay? They didn't read. They ignorant. I ain't say it was dumb. I said it was ignorant, being that they don't know. So, so now you can fool them for a while. What, 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 about, the, what about this other swash of people? So, so, okay, let me keep it on. I'm sorry. Number two, act strategic. Talk about nine powerful traits of successful leaders. They act strategic. All right? We'll give you a scripture for that. Proverbs 24, 5 through 6, Message Bible. It's better to be wise than strong. Intelligence outranks muscle any day. Whew. That right, there's a mic drop. Intelligence outranks muscle any day. Yeah, you working hard. You know, some of us right now, you know, uh, we, we got a little older. We, we you know, our, our, our muscles not like they used to be. We can't run, you know. But we play them young guys. Because what will we do? We all think them. They working real hard and shuffling and everything. You, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you I'll think them. Right? Okay. So we, we know it's true. Strategic planning is the key to warfare. 
Strategic planning is the key to warfare. To win, you need a lot of good counsel. So it tells us right there, we got to think strategically if we're going to win in any war. You got you to win with your mind. Okay? Now, if you look at what your hand I gave you, it says, a forward-thinking, open-minded approach is necessary for today's leaders. According to the Harvard Business Publishing Report, uh, leading now, critical capabilities for a complex world, it says, leaders must always be prepared to adjust their strategies to capture emerging opportunities or tackle unexpected challenges. I'm going to go back to that. That's a mic drop. Thinking strategically is an ongoing process that involves assessing your business environment or your work environment, whatever it may be. You can cultivate strategic thinking by being curious and genuinely interested in people and organizations. Okay? So you, and I, I, let me just call them out and then I come back. Being flexible in your mindset and, and, and trying new approaches and ideals. Foc number three, focusing on the future. And then maintain a positive outlook. Now it says that in order for us uh, to go forward, we, you know, we have to be prepared to think uh, strategically because we have emerging opportunities and unexpected challenges. And most people go crazy in the body of Christ because they're not thinking strategically. Some, a challenge comes, oh, what am I going to do? Well, slow down. Let's pray to God. Let's see what he has to say on it. And let's move in it accordingly. Somebody said, well, Doc, that work in the church. Whoa, 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 whoa. Remember what I do for a living. Uh, no, 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 no. That works everywhere. I use this everywhere. I use this downtown. I use this uptown. I use this at, 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 at some big company, and I use it in ministry. It all works the same. But you got to use it. You can't be religious, all right? Okay? And, and, and so, so you, you got to start thinking in a, in a very strategic way. Okay, what's, what are the steps for me to get to the next place? Most people work hard, they don't think hard. Most people work hard. You talk to people, man, I'm working hard. They work, people work hard. I, I know people who work hard. Not getting anywhere. Like, a, like riding a stationary bike. <laughs> and you go two or three miles, man, on the bike. But you ain't went anywhere. Same place. And, and that's what we've been trained to, to gloat in working hard. But you need to gloat in thinking hard. Thinkers get. I'm just telling you now. You got to learn to think hard. You got to learn to think strategically. Even for, in your family. Okay. We, know, we have these family dynamics. We have this crazy stuff that happened. Okay. Here's where we want to go. How am I going to get there? With the help of God. God. Direct me. Show me. Teach me. Lead me. And you can't be just, just that, that way and then speaking in tongues in, 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 in the corner. But then not. Okay. Bringing that to, to uh, what's going on in reality. I feel sorry for most church people. The world going to totally bypass them. Now, they're going to heaven, don't get me wrong, That's, which is the ultimate thing, the best thing. But they're going to live like hell on this earth. Because, they, because we won't take scripture and use it the right way. I said here, be, cu be curious and generally interested in people and organizations. If you're going to act strategically, be genuinely want the best for people. That's why we can't witness. That's why we're not witnesses because we don't care about people. Not for real, for real. No, we care about ourselves. Care about our next paycheck. Care about our next car, our, our next thing our, where we're going to buy. We, don't, we do not genuinely care for people like we should. We do not. So we don't think strategically how I'm going to help them. Here's, here's, here's what I'm thinking. I'm not perfect by no means. Okay, I got my own issues like everybody else in this room doing, everybody who's watching, right? But you can ask Dr. A. I generally never try to act crazy in public. Now, in private, you know, I may do some things from time to time. They go off a little bit. I really don't do that, but it's possible. It's possible for me to do it in public, but, not, but, but, but I generally don't. Why? I don't want anything to taint my witness of who God is. I don't want to offend nobody. 
I don't want, I, 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 I don't want to go crazy. I'm not going to go foolish at the restaurant. Tell me, hey, you pray. No, 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 no. Because, because no, I'm called to people. I don't know who's in there. I don't know who needs Jesus. So now you went crazy. Now you all, all combobulated. You and cuss people out on the phone. Right? Got to be careful. Also said, be flexible in your mindset and try new approaches and ideas. So you got you, you to be flexible in your mindset. You, you can't be rigid. That's a fixed mindset. You need a growth mindset that you're flexible. That, you know, what else can I learn? Let this mind that was in Christ be also in you. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4 and, 20, 4, 4, 4 and 13. You got you to open your mind up to new things, new ideals. Okay? Just because you, it has not been done, maybe God wants you to be the first to do it. We got to open your mind up for it. The reason why most people, even of color, are not, uh, the, uh I'm going to say this the right way. Our mind sometimes is so rigid and safe, we won't try anything new. So I, I may lose all my money. Yes! But if you never try, you'll never know. You'll get back up. Most, m- most self-made millionaires, 80% of them, 80 to 90 percent have, have been bankrupt at least one time. So it's part of it. Being an entrepreneur is part of it. You may, lo- you may lose it all to gain it all. Okay, let me keep going. Number three. Y'all, y'all, y'all getting this? Afraid of everything. Afraid to fly, afraid to drive, afraid to, you know, watching a bunch of news, this is going to happen. Someone goes, and somebody says, is it possible? Yes, it's possible, but it's not, pro- but it's not probable. But, it is, but yeah, it's possible. Right? You going to fly? Yeah. I tell people, when people drive two or three hours, you need to, they need to call you more than them flying two or three hours. Chance of them dying on a plane on a trip is, is, is slim to none. On the highway, yeah, your chances up a little bit. But you see how your mind is? See how your mind play you? Because, because you listen to people who don't understand what's going on. They have a false perception and false, a false mindset. You ask the average person, you know, what, what's the safer, to fly or to drive? Most are going to say, to drive, of course. It's not, it's not, it's not even a, a comparison. You see, what else is in your mind like that that's controlling you on a subconscious level, keeping you from being the leader God wants you to be? It is a reason why Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom. Because little kids don't have fear. Their minds are open to learn. It has not been conditioned by the world to, to, to question everything with, with dissent. Child is open. Hmm? So for them to come, for such is the kingdom. They open. They ain't been conditioned by mom, dad, environment. So now you got to act. Now to be a successful leader, you got to operate outside that environment. You got to change. Right? I do things just to mess people up sometimes. Just see where they at. See how your mind is. I told I called Pastor the other day. I called him by his first name. He almost had a heart attack. He kept re- referring to me. Apostle. I said, man, you call me Doc, man. Call me Rock. But the mind man said that, that, no, that you, you got to give him a title. When that's not even biblical. They, they didn't call none of them by those names. But the mind man conditioned that way. Uh-huh. Then like, that boy just ain't got no respect. No, I'm trying, I'm trying to shake you a little bit. Jaw you to get out, get, get, get out of, of, of this mindset that's not, that, that God didn't want us to have. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Number three. Number three. Good to see all you great people on, on, on tonight. Even Miss Johnny Franklin from the, from the hospital room. Tell Ray, we, we, we talking about him tonight. Mm-hmm. Number three. 
Being an effective communicator, those who listen, being an effective communicator, and we will have this online that you can uh, download here soon. Being an effective communicator. If you're going to be a, a successful leader, you got to be an effective communicator, not a talker. I know a lot of people can talk, but they don't communicate. Communication is, is, is both ways. Okay? The Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 29, New Living Translation, Ephesians 4 and 29, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Now, we know the word hear comes from the Hebrew word shma, shma, which means basically listening with the intent of obeying. And when you communicate, you are listening you are talking and you want people to listen with the intent of obeying or understanding what you are saying. Powerful leaders in your hand. Now, powerful leaders know when to talk and when to listen. If you're a person that talk all the time, you're not a good communicator because you ain't heard a thing somebody said. I know people who are in great positions. You can't get a word in edgewise. They won't listen. And you can't be a good communicator if you're not a listener. They are effective communicators and are able to clearly and succinctly explain to their employees everything from organizational goals to a specific task. And that's important. How many of y'all work for people that you don't know what they want y'all to do? Isn't that frustrating? If people don't understand or, or, or aren't aware of your expectations, they will, they're going to fall short. So the more specific you can be, the better. Communication is built on a steady flow of verbal and nonverbal exchanges. Nonverbal is pretty powerful, y'all. Of ideas and information. So work on being approachable. Uh-oh. I'm going to line that one. Work on being approachable. And involving people from different levels. This is very important when witnessing about the kingdom of God. You'll be approachable. Most, most believers are not even approachable. We're not even approachable. We, we, or, or we want to approach people. I ain't talking to them. Now just think if Jesus did that. Remember the, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan? Everybody passed him by. Right? You can't. You can't see somebody and then go to the other side of the road. Now, if you're a lady and you see somebody you don't know, and, and, I mean, I ain't saying you walk up to them, okay, all right? That ain't what I'm saying, all right? Well, I'm not, no, Dr. 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 Rock told me. No, that ain't what I'm saying. Okay, all right, that, no. But I'm talking about, but, but, but make sure you're not judging people when the Holy Ghost is saying you're supposed to say something to them. Right? You, you know, you're not that good. I'm not that good. Right? And, 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 and so, so, so we have to communicate with people on all levels. I don't care what level they're they on. You got to be able to communicate with them. You may not understand, but you, you got to do that. And we need that in the kingdom of God. But you got to be able to communicate. Most people cannot communicate who Jesus is. They, don't know, they can't communicate who Yeshua is. Here's what they say. You go to church. What? They ain't the first thing you ask them. You ask them, do, do they have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And they say, yes. And, and they say, oh, good. And then you start talking to them about it and see if they really have one. Right. It's about you. And, and how you do that? Talk about your relationship. How, how, how you love worship. How you love coming to hear the word of God and, uh, and being amongst other people and working in this and doing that. And if they, if they silent the whole time, then I have one. Then you go to the next step of communication and saying, hey, are you part of a faith community? Not church. Faith community. Emmanuel, we are the church. This is a faith community we have built. Emmanuel, the connection. Are you part of a faith community? But you got to be effective in your communication. And not just in witnessing, but in everything. What you, you know, you got a great product. You got something you're trying to sell. You, you know, you, you, you have a business you're trying to uh, start or whatever. How are you communicating it? And who are you communicating it with and to? P potential people who can buy it? Or just people who are going to listen to you or, uh, or people who are going to kill your vision? And, 
Now y'all get mad. And I'm going to tell you, most time when you go talk to people, especially family members, they're going to kill your vision. Because they can't see themselves doing anything, they definitely can't see you doing anything. You can't, you can't, you can't tell a big vision to a small-minded person. You try to communicate that, they're going to kill you. Say, yeah, I ain't never seen anybody do that. You're going to lose all your money. I wouldn't do it if I was you. On and on and on and on. No, 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 no. Communicate that to someone who can handle it. Okay? Yeah. Certain things I tell, I don't tell you all y'all everything that's going on with me and Dr. A from this, from this podium. I say little things that will increase your faith. Not, if I told you everything, you'll be freaking out. Or you'll be like, who do you think he is? Or, or jealousy set in. See, when you ain't doing, doing nothing for yourself, you'll get jealous real quick. I'm telling you, when jealousy set in, that means you, 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 you ain't focused on you. See, p- people who jealous, they focus on other people too much. I'm, you know, somebody asked me somebody about somebody being jealous. I said, man, I'm too busy to be jealous for anybody. I don't even know what they're doing. I got too much going on. I don't know if I'm coming or going sometimes. And I like it that way. Personally, that's me personally. You know, I ain't got time, right? No, because you got, you got other things you're handling yourself. Right? We're trying to make a difference in this world. We're trying to show people about Jesus Christ. You know, I was just at, at, at an event there at Chamberlain, and, you know, they always have, you know, drinks and everything. And um, they said, Doc, you going to get some, you know, because they don't drink, drink liquor. They said, you going to get some wine? I said, no, I got a cheese Bible study tonight. They said, well, I, I just talked to the messages over there, and they, they don't mind drinking wine. I said, well, we don't either. They said, well, why don't you get your glass? I said, no, I want to be pretty clear in my head when I'm teaching the word of God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But go ahead and do it, though, dog. You got to be very careful. You know, because I want to communicate with you the right way. You know, I come in, it's all right, you know, and it was like, hmm, Doc been drinking before he came up here. <laughs> and we didn't have communion today. <laughs> praise the Lord. All right, praise God. I got to laugh a little bit. All right, number four. Be a, here it is being accountable and responsible. Now, this is what we mess up. I'm accountable to several different people and groups. I'm not, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm not just accountable to people. I'm accountable to some groups. Matter of fact, one of them, Damar, and Dr. Ogden, know what we're doing. I got to give a whole presentation. I got to be accountable. They, I mean, they came in, and, and I had to pull the covers back. They gonna, some of them going to beat me up on some stuff. You need to do this, Doc. You need to do that, blah, blah, blah. You know, why? Because when you're accountable, you grow. When you're not accountable, you have to hold everything to yourself, and nobody knows what you're doing, you're not going to grow. You got to be accountable to people. So they can so, so, and give them access to criticize you. Most people can't take criticism. If you can't take criticism, you'll never grow. You'll never be what God called you to be. Okay. Let's read the scripture. Romans 14 and 12. I won't finish this, but it's all good. So then each one of us will give an account of whom? Yourself. Not your wife, not your husband, not your children, yourself, to God. Unfortunately, many people think they're going to be, they're gonna, they're gonna be accountable for their kids or for their... No, no, no. You don't, no. Right now, I know you love Cordia. And Cordia, I know you love Rodney, you know. And Rod, you can get there and say, God, let me tell you about court. I love him. He, first of all, he's going to say, what they got to do with you? <laughs> Here it is about you, Rod. I don't care. Court is stand for herself. And most people get that messed up. You won on earth. You ain't won when you get to heaven. And let me just clear up some. Oh, this ain't going to sound right. This ain't going to be good, y'all. Well, it's good, but it, some of you don't like it. You ain't looking for your wife when you get to heaven. Matter of fact, scriptures talk about you had a wife and then one die, and then when you get to heaven, who's going to be your wife? Neither. No such thing there. No such thing. I'm looking for, oh no. So I'll leave that alone. Baby, when I get that, I'm looking to kiss you. No, you're not. That's religion. 
It's not Bible. Okay, all right. Bitch. Gotta love them when they hear them. <laughs> Be account- being accountable and responsible. Successful leaders know how to use power and authority appropriately. Appropriately is the key. Effective leaders hold themselves accountable and take responsibility for their own mistakes. And they expect others to do the same. If you mess up, fall on the sword. You're a leader. With a situation with, 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 with uh, uh, organizations I was involved in, it was not my fault whatsoever uh, directly, but because I was over that organization, I, I fell on the sword. I said, I'm responsible. It was hard. It was tough. It was a rough time, okay? But I'm the leader. You have to be responsible for your mistakes. And God will bless you. You got to be accountable to people. You got to be responsible for your mistakes and not throw other people on the bus to make yourself look good. It is not biblical. It is not God. It is not good leadership. It also it goes on to say they can work within established procedures. It's just, it's, it's, these are successful leaders. They can work within established procedures and be productive and efficient in their decisions. They are able to balance different perspectives while taking appropriate action. You got to look at different things. You got to be accountable. You got to be accountable. Listen, I'm accountable to Dr. A as my wife. But I'm accountable to my spiritual mentors. I'm accountable to to my my business mentors. I'm accountable to to my business peer groups. We're, We're accountable in all kind of ways. And, when they, and where there's no accountability, there's danger. Danger, 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 danger. There's danger. And, and if you see a person who is in leadership and leading people, and, and he or she is not accountable to anyone, run. Run. We all need accountability. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how high you get. I don't care how much money you have. We all need accountability. We really do. God called us to be accountable to ourselves, and you got to be accountable to other people. If you're part of a team and you're not going to be there, you call the, the leader of the team, okay, or somebody on the team and say, I can't be there. Right. It's the same thing in church, you know. If you, okay, I mean, you're going to work and you're not going to be at work, you call your boss and say, I'm not going to be there, your leader. Right. You know, people be part of a team at church, you know, don't no, no show up now, can't call nobody. And this more important, this is God's business. And what people don't understand is, is that God's business, okay, is, 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 is first. Not, not, not your personal business. Seeking first the kingdom of God in all his righteousness, right standing. You know, you're just showing up late, just waltzing up. You know, church will start at 10. You won't, you're supposed to be on post as a greeter at 9.05. You just waltz up like ain't nothing even happened. Like you ain't even late. No, God can't bless that. And I'm telling you, that's why many people are not blessed. They don't take care of the little things. Right. Got to be accountable. It's the little things. You know, I, I think I praise him, get him like, uh, what time is it? Nine for something, nine forty, eight forty five, something like that, whatever. Yeah. But she was in uh, this, this Sunday, and I said, I said, you know, I don't I said, you know, we had one more. I said, where the rest of them at? I'm teaching while I'm teaching. I'm coming in that you on time, but at the same time, I'm saying, okay. And guess what? People have excuses. And sometimes legitimate excuses. But you need to call. Listen, uh, I'm accountable to my meetings. If I have a meeting with you and I'm, and I'm going to be more than five minutes late, you're going to get a call from me saying, I'm running late. Because you could choose to say, Doc, okay, now I only have 35 minutes. We got, got 30, okay? Or you could choose to say, well, hey, I'm out of here. That's your choice because I'm late. Your time is valuable. But most people don't even think their time is valuable. They think their money is valuable. And there's no value on money. Right, that's another teacher for another time. You are accountable. It's amazing how we want our children to be accountable, but we don't want to be accountable. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going here. Where am I at? Number five. So successful leaders also do this. They set clear goals and persistently in achieving them. 
They persisted in achieving them. How many of you said goals? It's good. You gotta write them down too. Let me read Philippians, the third chapter, 13 through 14. I don't depend on my own strengths to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus, and I'll go back to, to this page two in a second. I forget all of the past as I've fastened my heart. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointed, anointing of Jesus, of Jesus. I would say Jesus Christ, but of Jesus. So Paul is saying, I got some I'm reaching for. I got a goal. And I'm going to forget what's behind me. I see a goal. I'm going to achieve it. Most people don't set goals. Most people don't have clear goals. Clearly, Paul's saying, I gave up everything. My goal is to be with Jesus. That's where I'm going. That's nothing else. You can give me money. The goal is to be with the Father. Now, what's the principle of that? The principle is having a clear goal. Pressing. I press, King James, I press, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. A goal is something that you set and you are clear about it. I put down here, set goals and, and be determined and purposely in achieving them. Paul was determined. Pa Paul went on almost four, almost probably five, we recorded two of them, missionary journeys, died in a Roman jail only for a goal to know Jesus. I put down him, back it all up with unshakable self-confidence. We'll talk about this next time I teach this. If you radiate enthusiasm and are truly excited about what you're doing, people will be naturally drawn to you. Now, I want to talk about this. I'm going to use myself as an example. I'm not trying to brag about myself. Something that you happen today. If you radiate enthusiasm and are truly excited about what, what you're doing, People will be naturally drawn to you. So, with, 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 with Von Brown today, uh, Congress Strong uh, gave his, his, his Washington update, uh, uh, thousands of people in there. Okay, when it's over, I'm, I'm there. And a gentleman came up who's part of the Space Commission, um, friend, and he's like, Doc, man, I ain't seen you in a long time. How you doing? I said, man, I'm doing good. How you, how you doing? He goes to tell a CEO of a major company here in, in town, said, man, said, this guy has a great attitude. His energy is awesome. I love being around him. Here's what the guy said. He said, everybody want a piece of doc. Now, no, no glory go to me. That's the glory of God. Why? Because my energy, my spirit is of enthusiasm. Here's what a lady told me when I walked in the chamber tonight, tonight, this evening. She said, Doc, she, she said, you put a smile on everybody's face. You just liven up the room every time you walk in. And you're sharp too. I want to tell her, I know I am. <laughs> My, Dr. A, Dr. A didn't want me to leave the house this morning. She said, where you going today? I mean, for real, she really did. <laughs> where you going? Yeah, okay, now, now nothing to get, so, so are people drawn to you? See, because if we're going to witness and be a witness for Jesus Christ, people need, should be drawn to you. Too many Christians, people are running from us because of our disposition. When you got a goal, you are excited, you have enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is not just a feeling, it's a place that you want to go. Sir Walter Appleton, who created the World uh, Broadcasting System and won a Nobel Peace Prize for it uh, there in, uh, in, in, in Europe, they said, how did you do what you did? He said, it was enthusiasm. He said, I rate enthusiasm above education. A physicist. So I'm just trying to tell you, if you're going to be successful, you got you to love something about you, what you're doing. I'm not saying you got to be bubbly. Anybody not bubbly? But can I be honest with you? I didn't grow up bubbly. Was I bubbly? No. Was I bubbly? No. No, I was a straight up nerd 
quiet dude. Was I not? Yeah, they, all of them was talking on the bus and everything. I may say a, a couple words here and there. No. I wouldn't quote the leader. I was smart. I made good grades, but I wasn't the leader. I'm just telling y'all. No. He led me. <laughs> good stuff and bad, but anyway, it's all good. <laughs> oh, God is good. Right? I'm following. So don't, let's say, so don't think that this is, Dr. A didn't marry this. No, she one day woke up and was like, who are you? Who the, where you come from, dude? <laughs> but when you hit your stride and figure out who you are and get a goal in mind, yeah. it, it's going to rise up in you. Yeah. You got to find out who you are, y'all. I'm going I'm, I'm to let it go today. You got to find out who you are. When you find out who you are, you are unstoppable. You will be successful. And nobody will be able to take you from down off of what God told you. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth now. I wake up every single morning with something in my mind that I'm going to change something in the world. We are world changers. I'm telling you this. But you got to have some goals. You got to have a dream. Divine, reveal, event, awaiting manifestation. I'm going to stop there. I'm out of time. Two minutes, three minutes over. I can teach forever. I was, you know, some of y'all watch Facebook. I was one place yesterday morning and another place yesterday evening. Somebody said, where are you going next? And, 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 and by the way, those who watch it, I don't post for popularity. I'm posting for influence. Oh, let me say that one more time. Not a popular thing with me. It's influence. Pop, we, I, I ain't trying to be popular. Okay, uh, that costs you money. I'm trying to be influential. And guess what? It's working. It's working. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. I let, see his last thing. Somebody said, Doc, why you smile all the time? I said, this is, this is my... Business people today. It's not good. How you? I said. He said, Vernon Simpson. I wish somebody took a picture. I said, I did it like three times. Him. You see, God wants to set you up so when people ask you how you do what you do, they, they, you, know, you can say, hey, it's him. It's not me. Without him, I'm in trouble. This is him. This is the hope of glory you see. Glory to God. That rising up out of me. Okay, I'm gonna stop because I'm. I feel him, so I better leave that. I better leave that alone. Praise God. God want to do something amazing in you. And I don't care. You gotta fight and scratch your way and claw your way. I don't care how you messed up in the past. A minute, forget it, quit it. Cause God trying to get some out of you. We're in the last days, and people gotta see the glory of God happening in the marketplace. Jesus spent ninety percent of his time not in the synagogue, but in the marketplace around people, showing them what the kingdom is about. The kingdom is not about you uh, being religious. It's about God working in you and what He did through you. It ain't where you uh, where you go. Uh, it's not where you going. It's where how, where you started from. You measure your success by where you where you started. If you started here and you here, you successful. If you started here and here, that really. Okay, let's pray. Father God, I got a little excited. I feel your power. And we thank you for who you are. God, this is about you. Every example is about you. Everything we do is about you. For you to get the glory. We are nothing without you. You take your hand from us and we'll die. You take your anointing from us, we couldn't even speak. People wouldn't, wouldn't even be, want, want to be around us. But your glory, God. So, God, we want to be successful leaders in you. Not successful according to the world, but according to you. Fulfilling the mandate. On our life, Father God. And God, we know we can achieve and get some things and go some places and have things and eat at places. That, 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 that's not hard. That's easy for you. We don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on how we can make people better, not through ourselves, but through your teaching and your example, through your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Christ the Lord. Now, God bless those who may be watching that don't know you. Heal them. Set them free. Save them, God, not from you, from themselves. 
so they can receive you and have a personal relationship and join this faith community as we go forward. Now, God, we love you, and God, we bless you. And God, just continue to use all of us, not just me, all of us, in our own capacities, in our own spaces. And God, we know that you will get the glory and the gift will make room for us. And you said, bring us before great men. And so, God, we thank you and we bless you. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen.